4.6 covalent bonding. For this lesson, please take out your periodic table. Let's move on to the lesson. First, let's talk about what covalent bonds are. Covalent bonds, first of all, are bonds formed when uh, two nuclei of nonmetals will share valence electrons to achieve or get a stable valence electron configuration, uh, meaning that, and typically no ions are involved. Uh, the key word here for covalent bonding is share. Okay, so that's the key word here. The two atoms or nuclei will actually share valence electrons to achieve or get a stable valence electron configuration. Because these um, atoms or nonmetals share valence electrons, there is no loss or gain of electrons if there is no sacrifice or giving of electrons from one atom to another. Therefore, since no electrons are being lost or gained, and since covalent bonds only involve sharing between nonmetal atoms of valence electrons, um, covalent bonds do not involve ions, but rather just atoms. All right, so that's what I mean by no ions. Since they're sharing, there's no loss or gain of electrons. Since there's no loss or gain of electrons, the nonmetal atoms stay exactly the way they are. Okay? So um, there are no ions formed. There's no positive ion, there's no negative ion. The atoms only share valence electrons, so they stay exactly as they are. All right, ionic bonds, let's remember, involve transfer of valence electrons from the metal atom to the nonmetal atoms so that they form, both form ions that are attracted to each other. However, covalent bonds, on the other hand, only involve sharing. Since you only involve sharing and you're not losing or gaining electrons, the nonmetal atoms stay just that way as atoms, okay? Um, now, how covalent bonds are formed is as follows. Covalent bonds form... Um, when electrons are shared between two nonmetal atoms. All right, and there are electrons in the middle between the two nonmetal atoms in every covalent bond, no matter what, since they're sharing electrons anyway, right? And the electrons in the middle between the two atoms just so happen to count towards both elements, okay? So since they're sharing the electrons anyway, the electrons in the middle between the two nonmetal atoms will count towards both elements since they're sharing them anyway. And the result is, that both atoms wind up getting uh, the that both atoms by sharing electrons will wind up getting a full octet of eight valence electrons. Hence, they'll become stable as we learned before, right? Finally, we need to realize that covalent bonds involve all nonmetals only. Let's remember nonmetals are only elements to the right of the steps in the periodic table. So, if I pull up the periodic table here. Um, I'll see the nonmetals are only the elements to the right of the steps on the periodic table like this, right? And they'll usually get or have those uh, top negative top oxidation states as we learned before. They generally have those negative top oxidation states, right? Um, so remember that nonmetals are only elements to the right of the steps on the periodic table. The one and only exception to this that exists is H. Okay, even though H or hydrogen is to the left of the steps in the periodic table, H or hydrogen is still a nonmetal. So H is the only nonmetal on the periodic table that's to the left of the steps. All the other nonmetals are usually to the right of these bold steps on the periodic table. All right, so um, remember that um, covalent bonds involve all nonmetals only. And nonmetals are usually to the right of the bold steps on the periodic table, except for H, which is the only exception because it's to the left of the steps. Now let's talk about the two types of covalent bonds, nonpolar covalent bonds and polar covalent bonds. First of all, nonpolar covalent bonds are bonds that involve uh, two nonmetal atoms having equal attraction for electrons that are shared. So there's an equal sharing of the electrons. All right, this is because... Uh, two of the same types of nonmetals are involved, or two of the same nonmetals are involved, in other words. So it's like a tie and a tug of war. No one wins because there's no pole. No pole means that they're two of the same nonmetals, so no one's winning. It's like a tie because they're both the same thing. All right, an example of a nonpolar covalent bond is Cl2, where there are um, two Cl atoms, and the two Cl atoms have an equal pole or equal sharing of the electrons. This is because the two nonmetals, Cl here and Cl here, are the exact same nonmetals, so they have equal strength or power in some ways. All right, so there's no pull because it's a tie and tug of war. All right, this bond forms when the lonely single electrons here and here, 
on each Cl atom pair up with one another in the middle to get eight valence electrons each. All right, so if you look here on the outside, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, so there are six valence electrons in each Cl atom that are not in the middle circled in red. And then there are two valence electrons that are in the middle, which I've circled in red. All right, so if you add up the six electrons out here away from the middle or not shared, and the two electrons in the middle, which are shared, you get eight valence electrons for each Cl atom. So you know that each one is stable because eight is the maximum, and that means that the valence electron shell is full. All right? And you can tell that this bond is nonpolar because the same nonmetals are bonded right next to each other. All right, the Cl atoms are right next to each other, not separated by anything. All right, the red circle in the middle shows that the two electrons are shared. All right, so in, um, yeah, so in uh, figure 1b for Cl2, neither Cl is pulling electrons closer, so it's basically a tie in a tug-of-war game. The electrons are shared equally since the electrons are attracted equally to one another. They're the same thing. So obviously the electrons will be attracted equally to both of them, so it's like a tie. All right, so the electrons are shared equally since the electrons are attracted in an equal way to the same element for the two Cl atoms. So the electrons are just basically shared equally for nonpolar covalent bonds. On the other hand, um, polar covalent bonds are bonds that involve two nonmetal atoms having unequal attraction for the electrons that are, sh that are shared. So, in other words, the sharing of the electrons is unequal. This is because you have two different nonmetals being involved. So the result in the tug-of-war game is uneven. One is more likely to win than the other is because one person has more of a pull or more strength than the other does in terms of pulling. All right, an example of a polar covalent bond is HCl, um, where the H and the Cl atoms have a different pull um, or unequal sharing of the electrons. This is because the nonmetals, H and Cl, are different nonmetals. All right, this bond forms when the lonely single uh, electron here on H, on top right here, and here on Cl, pair up with one another to get a stable configuration. So there are six electrons on the Cl atom that are not in the middle, and two valence electrons that are in the middle, which I've circled in red. Notice that H has no valence electrons on the outside. I'll talk about that in a minute. But for Cl, if you add up the six electrons away from the middle, um, or not shared, and the two electrons in the middle, which are shared, you get eight valence electrons for the Cl atom. So you know that this atom is stable. For H, on the other hand, this is a little strange, but I'll explain it right now. Uh, for H, if you add up the two electrons that are shared in the middle, um, you get two valence electrons for the H atom. H is an exception to the octet rule. Here, uh, something called the duet rule dominates, where H and HE, which are shown here, uh, H right here, and HE right here, these two elements um, are an exception because um, they only need two valence electrons to become stable. Since H has two valence electrons from the middle right here that are circled in red, it is also stable in the HCl bond. All right? So H is an exception in what's known as the duet rule because it only needs two valence electrons to be satisfied or full. That's the only exception to the octet rule. All right? And so is, uh, so is HE because it only needs two valence electrons to become stable. All right, in any case, you can tell that this bond is polar because different nonmetals are bonded next to each other. The H and the Cl atoms are right next to each other, and they're different nonmetals. That's how you know it's a polar covalent bond. The red circle in the middle shows two electrons that are shared between the two atoms. Everything that's not in the middle is what's not shared. All right, so in figure 1A for HCl, um, Cl is uh, pulling electrons closer to it, so the H thinks that's slightly unfair because the electrons are being shared unequally, since the electrons are gener generally actually attracted closer to Cl. All right? There's an unequal sharing of valence electrons in polar covalent bonds, and there's an equal sharing of valence electrons in nonpolar covalent bonds. The reason why it's unequal in polar covalent bonds is because you have two different nonmetals. The reason why it's equal in nonpolar covalent bonds is because they're the same nonmetal. I do want to note one more thing. Just remember that H is an exception to the octet rule because it only needs two valence electrons to be full or stable. That's what the duet rule is known.
Now let's talk about nonpolar covalent bonds and molecules. Remember that nonpolar covalent bonds involve usually the same nonmetals bonded right next to each other. Now, to identify molecules with nonpolar covalent bonds, you can identify these types of molecules by finding which molecule has two of the same nonmetal bonded next to each other. So just remember to identify which molecule has a nonpolar covalent bond. Find the molecule with two of the same nonmetal bonded right next to each other. All right, two of the same nonmetal automatically makes it so that the molecule contains a nonpolar covalent bond. That's because the two same nonmetals being bonded together makes a nonpolar covalent bond. Let's see two examples. On the left side here, uh, the pairs of C atoms that I circled in red uh, makes a nonpolar covalent bond between two C atoms because two of the same nonmetal, which are two Cs, makes it a nonpolar covalent bond between the two C atoms since they're the same nonmetal. On the right here, the pair of C atoms in the middle of the Cl circled in red makes a nonpolar covalent bond between the two C atoms because they're two of the same nonmetal, or they're just two uh, Cs. All right, the main idea here is that if two of the same nonmetal are bonded right next to each other in the molecule, it shows that the molecule has a nonpolar covalent bond. We don't care about everything else on the outside. If you have at least two of the same nonmetal bonded right next to each other that automatically makes it a molecule with a nonpolar covalent bond. Keep in mind, you must know this exact wording. The molecule contains a nonpolar covalent bond if you have two of the same nonmetal bonded right next to each other anywhere in the molecule. C and C, C and C, C and C. This makes it nonpolar because you have C and C bonded right next to each other. This makes it nonpolar covalent bond within the molecule because you have two of the same L, two of the same uh, nonmetal bonded right next to each other. All right. So if you have two of the same nonmetal bonded right next to each other, that automatically makes it a molecule with a nonpolar covalent bond. Now let's try an example using what we know, sample problem one. I'm not going to read through these questions, but let's just go through them one by one. Question one: We have NH three. And um, we know that N and H are both nonmetals. All right? And since N and H are two different nonmetals, the bond formed is polar covalent, where electrons are shared unequally between the H and the N atoms to form a uh, polar covalent bond. This is because the nonmetals are different, so they have a different pull for the electrons. All right, so that makes it polar covalent. Question two, since F and F are the same nonmetal, uh, the bond formed is nonpolar covalent where electrons are shared equally between the F atoms to form a um, covalent bond. All right, this is a nonpolar covalent bond because the nonmetals are the same, so they have the same pole for the electron. Overall, it's a tie, in other words. Question three, the only formula with a nonpolar covalent bond. Um, is a bond where we have two C's next to each other and um, six H's as shown here, which I've circled in red. This formula represents a molecule with a nonpolar covalent bond because two of the same nonmetal, C and C, are bonded right next to each other. All right? So this formula shows two of the same nonmetal, C and C, bonded right next to each other, so therefore that makes a molecule with a nonpolar covalent bond by definition. NaCl obviously is incorrect because it's an ionic bond with the metal cation Na plus and Cl minus. So that's the wrong option. The S with the two H's don't have any of the same non-metal next to each other, so that's a wrong option. And none of the H's in CH4 are next to each other, so that's a wrong option. This is the only one where you have two of the same non-metal bonded right next to each other, so that's the only molecule with a non-polar covalent bond. Now let's go through the guide to practice questions. A is, uh, sorry, for number one, A is a nonpolar covalent bond because it involves two of the same nonmetals, Cl and Cl. So electrons are shared equally between the two Cl atoms because neither pulls more strongly. Now, B, D, E, and F are um, polar covalent bonds because B, D, E, and F all involve um, two different nonmetals, so electrons are shared unequally because one of the atoms pulls more strongly than the others, others does. All right, so B's nonmetals, which are different, are N and I. D's different nonmetals are H and SE. E's different nonmetals are H and BR. And um, F's different nonmetals are N and H. All right, uh, C, G, H, and I are um, all ionic bonds because they involve um, a metal and a nonmetal. So you have a transfer from the metal atom to 
um, the nonmetal in terms of electrons. So C's metal is Ca, and the nonmetal is S. All right, G's metal is Al, and uh, the nonmetal is S. H's metal is K, and the nonmetal is O. I's metal is Ba, and the nonmetal is Cl. All right. So you know that in uh, C, Ca transfers its electrons to S. In G, um, Al transfers its electrons to S. In H, K transfers its electrons to O. And in I, Ba transfers its electrons to Cl. All right. So that's how you know it's ionic, because it's a metal and a nonmetal, and the metal transfers electrons to the nonmetal. Now in number two, um, the two C's in the middle of this big, big molecule, uh, or rather, yeah, the pairs of C's in the middle, bond being bonded right next to each, uh, sorry, bonded right next to each other, shows that there's a nonpolar covalent bond in this because it's two of the same nonmetal, C and C and C and C. As long as you have two of the same nonmetal bonded right next to each other somewhere in the molecule, you know that's a molecule with a nonpolar covalent bond because you have two of the same nonmetal bonded right next to each other. All right, this doesn't work because it's ionic. This doesn't work because none of the same nonmetals are bonded next to each other, and this doesn't work because none of the so same nonmetals are bonded next to each other. This is the only one where you have two of the same nonmetal bonded right next to each other for a nonpolar covalent bond in the molecule, which is C and C and C and C. Please complete these homework questions on your own for the next class. Remember, as always, in addition to these two questions, you must also answer checkpoint questions one through three, which uh, popped out through throughout this video. So you must watch the video to be able to answer the checkpoint questions in addition to these two questions. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.